Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog and I'm here with the December Garden Tour in which I'm going to highlight what I think are the plants that really make a huge difference to winter gardens in the hopes that that'll help you too. I'll start with the weather, which is that it has been surprisingly cold and surprisingly wet. I often say that we very rarely have frosts here in Kent in South East England, but we started the month with a series of really good, hard, sharp frosts. And I have to do a shout out for my favourite tree, Cotinus cagyria grace, which held onto its autumn colour right until the first frosts. And the combination of frosts and this glowing red leaves was just beautiful. Now all the leaves have come off the trees and the shrubs and the deciduous plants and the perennials have mainly gone underground. There's been a certain amount of clearing away and I've also quite a lot of things have just collapsed. So we really are now down to the absolute structure of the garden, to the bare bones and to the plants that keep it going when really nothing much else is happening in the garden. And right at the top of that list has got to be trees. In 2019, garden designers generally tried to encourage us to get more trees into our gardens, however small they are, because trees give a garden a great sense of proportion and they, they somehow can make a small garden feel bigger just because they lead the eye upwards and it means you know, you're using some of that vertical space as well. But they are so important for improving air quality, particularly in towns and cities, and they provide a wonderful habitat for birds and for wildlife. And I think that trees are just as beautiful in the garden when their leaves are off as when their leaves are on. And this Robinia frisia is just such a presence in the garden. And of course, if you can find trees with beautiful bark, like this silver birch Jack Montii, that is great. And I know that there are other beautiful trees like paper bark maple, for example. I've always had a bit of trouble growing aces in this garden, but paper bark maple is something that would look gorgeous if it, if it works in your garden. And while we're talking about trees, Oh, this is a wonderful time of year for conifers. Conifers have been very unfashionable, but they are definitely coming back now. And what they have got is fantastic shape. They've got evergreen colour. They've got quite a wide range of, of colours and shapes and styles. And of course, there are quite a few that are dwarf, or you can keep them dwarf either by pruning them or by keeping them in pots. I have got the really unpopular evergreen Leylandii cypress in this garden and we just cut it to keep it in shape. We have it as a pruned sharp hedge and then we also have a single tree. We just simply stop it from growing too tall. The real problem with some conifers is that they will just grow to 100 feet and that is simply too much for a small garden. It overshadows everyone's gardens, it's not great for anyone. But I also have some smaller pines and there's something called a Pinus mugo, which is a plant I absolutely adore. And the thing is about pines, they've got these really kind of sharp architectural leaves and you know, it's just a wonderful shape. And at this time of the year, they really provide um, structure and texture and everything like that. I've got my Pinus mugo in pots, but I would love to have more pines generally in the borders. And I've also got two junipers in pots. Now, juniper apparently is becoming quite rare, but I was sent a tiny juniper plant, literally the size of, you know, my finger, just the size of my finger, by a gin company. But it, it didn't have anything with it, and it didn't say what gin company it was. Um, but I think I managed to find out, and I sent them a letter just saying, I, was that your gin plant? And I said, oh, terribly sorry, we'll send you a bottle of gin and a press release. And then they sent me another gin plant and they never sent me the press release or the gin. But anyway, so I've got these two gin plants from a gin company, which I don't know what it is. And I've put them in pots and in just two or three years, they've grown to a very decent size and they've got a lovely shape and they're they're just really lovely kind of feathery leaves. And I think a great contrast and texture for a garden. And with these in the pots, I've got formium. Now, formium is a plant, once again, very fashionable in the 70s. It's really come back in. It's got these amazing stripy leaves. It looks quite tropical, but actually it's incredibly hardy. 
It appears to be really quite undemanding. I've got four formiums in pots. I've got two red jokers along the back wall and I have got this white and yellow one and I've Fred, I've forgotten the name of that, but I will put it in the description below. And I've just stuck them in the pots and they really have just sat there and I've hardly had to do anything for them. And they, they, they're they really earning their place in the garden when there's so little going on. And of course, grasses are great for winter interest. And actually, sometimes I think, oh, I'm not really sure about grasses in the border and it get they get a bit scrappy and then they get plants grow over them. And I think, oh, this isn't really working. But I went out one morning in one of the frosts and there was the ponytail grass just looking gorgeous. I mean, really lovely. And I've, I'm going to look into how to look after this because I think that really I should be cutting it back every year and I haven't been. This particular ponytail grass has been in the earth for about three years. But it's been very little trouble and it's great at this time of year. Of course, when it comes to winter interest, everyone talks about seed heads. And of course, the other thing is seed heads are great. Leaving seed heads on is absolutely great for the birds and the wildlife because um, they use them for food. The only thing is, of course, it means that as the winter goes on, you get fewer seed heads because they have been eaten. And indeed, I think they also just sort of slowly collapse down. So seed heads is wonderful in December, I think. I think by the end of January, there probably aren't going to be any left in the garden. But I think a special shout out for Rue Le Dan Acanthus mollis. This is a wonderful uh, perennial plant. It's very easy to look after. The most common form of an Acanthus mollis has got purple tinged flowers and it is almost a weed. It's called bear's britches. It will, you know, you plant it, it will take over, it will go anywhere. This is the white version, it's Rue Le Dan, and it actually takes a while to get established, but it's been very little trouble. I planted this ruler down about three years ago. It didn't really do anything for the first two years. Then it had wonderful white spires last year and now these beautiful seed heads. So I think that has really earned a place both in my summer garden and in my winter garden. I also love these Veronicastrum seed heads, but actually even since I've taken these photos, they have rather collapsed. So they're one of the ones that are not going to last throughout the winter. I've got some aster seed heads. And I've got a few things like rose hips, but once again, those started to collapse a little bit to go, they're getting eaten. Uh, it's the rose hips that the birds don't like that hang around. And I'd just like to mention a plant that is often discussed in terms of summer gardens, but I don't think I've heard anyone talk about it in the context of a winter garden before, and that's lavender. We cut our lavender back really hard, and there's a link in the description below about that. So it makes a very kind of firm sculptural bush and it makes a lovely shape it looks so beautiful with frost on it and I would say that you know bushes of lavender cut back hard and kept in a, a good tight shape are a real asset to the winter garden you'll notice that I haven't mentioned my box in pots and that those are a significant presence particularly the spiral twirl in the middle of the garden but the problem that we're having in southeast England is a great deal of trouble with box caterpillar moth and box blight. And although I haven't had those in my garden, I would hesitate to recommend box as a plant to anyone at the moment until those two problems have been dealt with. Although I have to say that, you know, they have been so easy care and such good value. It might be worth taking the risk. And of course, topiary and the winter garden. I mean, oh, it's just fabulous. It has taken us several years to get these trees into a topiarized shape. And if you have thousands of pounds, you can buy them in a topiarized shape and that would be much quicker, but uh, we didn't. So the two trees with the kind of two little balls on, those are home oaks, and the little round lollipops on either side of the bench are actually privet. Now privet is quite inexpensive and it's very easy to train. It's a bit more work because it grows very fast. So you will have to trim it two or three times a year, whereas the home oaks will only be once a year. And then the wedding cake holly to the right is, um, it was a bush, it was just a lump of a bush. We, we trained it over maybe about three years. And once again, that's only cut once a year. I do find it best to pay someone who's an expert to trim my topiary. So that's an added cost that you would have to think of when you're thinking about having these large topiary pieces. But actually growing your own or adapting your own shrubs to topiary is still going to be an awful lot cheaper than buying a mature piece of topiary. And of course, 
if this shrub has been in your garden since it was small, it, you'll know that it grows well. Whereas if you buy something, a hugely expensive piece of topiary and you put it in the ground, it's possible, you know, it may not be completely happy with you. This video has taken ages to shoot because every time I go out into the garden, I see another fabulous winter plant that I want to tell you about. This morning, for example, I went outside and of course I noticed Orchuba japonica, which is a yellow spotted shrub, evergreen shrub. It has to be one of the most unpopular shrubs in Britain today. But at this time of year, or in a shady corner, I think it really earns its place. And next to it, of course, is ivy. Now, ivy is another evergreen that's got quite a bad reputation. And people used to think that it could damage buildings and walls and trees. But the RHS have done quite a lot of research, and you can see if you go to their page on ivy, what the real truth is. Ivy won't damage healthy trees or brickwork that's in good condition. It will burrow its roots into broken brickwork or where the pointing is loose and it can pull down gutters. Its roots will sucker and pull off paintwork, so you don't want it anywhere near any paintwork. You don't want it to wind itself around guttering and then pull it down through its sheer weight. And if your brickwork is broken or in bad condition or your pointing needs replacing, then the roots might work their way in there. And so, of course, if your house is in good condition, growing ivy up, it will not cause it any damage. Ivy doesn't make the brickwork damp. In fact, it insulates the house very well from both wind and cold and also from a certain amount of rain. And the RHS are doing tests at the moment to see if they could grow ivy up on grids and actually use it for insulating houses. And that would be fabulous because it is so wonderful for wildlife and obviously all evergreen foliage is great for air quality. I've got two kinds of ivy. One is variegated. I think it might be dentata and the other is the straightforward English ivy or Hedera helix. The, great, the next great winter plant I have to mention, of course, is cornus because cornus's stems in red and orange look and yellow look fabulous in winter. And I have cornus alba elegantissima and cornus midwinter fire. I think perhaps cornus are a winter plant for the slightly larger middle-sized gardens because they're very good in a patch where you don't really grow anything else very much. For example, I grow them near my silver birch and of course the contrast looks fabulous in winter, but not much goes on in that particular patch of the garden in the summer. But if you have a much smaller garden or perhaps a narrow garden, you might find that cornice didn't give you quite as much value throughout the year. And then of course there are the winter herbs. Sage, rosemary and bay are all fabulous in winter and I particularly love sage's grey-green leaves. And when I was looking on my terrace, I noticed that my fat's ear in a pot was looking great. Now that's another old fashioned plant that suddenly become back in. Uh, it seems to be perfectly happy wherever it is, whatever you're doing to it. It really does seem to be a fantastic low maintenance plant with a great leaf shape. And eucalyptus. Oh, I have always wanted a eucalyptus in my garden. I've bought some tiny eucalyptus plants and at the moment they're in a pot on the table. But I'm really looking forward to getting some eucalyptus in my garden because its grey green leaves look fabulous all year round. It's wonderful for flower arranging and it's particularly good in Christmas decorations. And in terms of winter ground cover, I think cyclamen is absolutely beautiful. It's got these lovely variegated leaves and it's all over. It just seems to grow very easily. And in the autumn, it starts out with these lovely little white flowers. And then in the winter, you've got this ground cover where otherwise you'd have bare earth. But in the summer, it just disappears. So when there's an awful lot going on in the garden, actually cyclamen just isn't in the way. So I would really put in a good shout out for cyclamen in the winter garden. And this is a white one. I think it's cyclamen hederifolium, but I'm also putting a pink one in my front garden. And speaking of the front garden, Viburnum bodnansi, I don't think I've pronounced that properly, um, but anyway, it'll be in a link in the description below. But it has pink flowers which continue throughout the winter and look wonderful in snow. I think this is also a great time of year just to look back quickly at the garden and to see how it changes through the season. So I've got 30 seconds to music here of 
12 months in this garden and seeing how it changes. So I hope that's helped you in terms of winter gardens and there are links to quite a lot of the things I've mentioned in the description below and if you found this helpful please do hit like or leave a comment. I really appreciate all the comments you leave. It just is so interesting to see what everyone has to say and if you would like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your middle-sized garden in 2020 then please do subscribe to the Middle-Sized Garden and thank you for watching. Goodbye.